Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Biology and today we're going to be looking at acids, bases, and buffers. Now you've probably, if you ha have taken a traditional chemistry class, you've probably already um, seen these topics and I know personally that acids and bases and buffers are one of the hardest topics in chemistry, but uh, at, at least for biology, we really don't need to know that much um, knowledge about acids, bases, and buffers. We just need to need, know a few things, so don't be scared uh, just because we're covering this. Before we talk about acids, bases, and buffers, let's first talk about the self-ionization of water. Uh, so water sometimes dissociates to form ions. Let me go ahead and show you how that happens. So sometimes, this happens very rarely, for every 500 million water molecules, about only one will do this. But what happens is that two water molecules, if you have two water molecules like this, One of the hydrogen atoms from one of the water molecules will break its co single covalent bond with the oxygen atom. So let's say this covalent bond is broken. And that hydrogen atom will drift to another water molecule and um, bond to it. Okay. And it'll bond to the oxygen side of another water molecule because that hydrogen atom will have a positive charge. And then this complete ion that is formed here, that is called hydronium. And it has a positive charge. And then this ion right here is called hydroxide. And it has a negative charge. So basically what happens in water is that we have this constant equilibrium. In pure water, this is. I'm going to write it up here. We have an equilibrium. So most water, most water molecules in pure water remain in the typical um, form of water, H2O, but sometimes they dissociate and they form hydronium, which is what I have here, H3O, 1, 2, 3, H3, and then O plus, because it has a plus 1 charge, and then hydroxide, OH minus. So we have this constant equilibrium. We talked about types of chemical reactions. This is um, an equilibrium re reaction. So we have this constant equilibrium. Now, that doesn't mean that all water molecules are doing this, okay? I said, again, for every one one in five, about 500 million water molecules will actually dissociate and um, create hydronium and hydroxide, okay? And this is a very important rule in chemistry. It's not really that relevant in biology, but I'm going to use it to explain what an acid and a base is. So the product of the concentration. Now, concentration is a measure of how much solute is in a solvent. I didn't mention this in our in my video on solutions, but this is important. Concentration is the amount of solute in a solvent, okay? And the unit, the basic unit for concentration is molarity. Just like how um, the unit for mass is grams and the unit for length is meters. In the same sense, the unit for concentration is molarity. So the product of the concentration and molarity of the hydronium ion, and the way we represent that mathematically is like this. The concentration, we write brackets like this. So this mean, this this bracket, which H3O plus, means the concentration in molarity of H3O plus times the concentration in molarity of the hydroxide ion equals a constant. This equals a constant. Let me write this right here. And that constant is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. I'm just going to write 10 to the minus 14. It's the same thing, basically. And that constant is considered to be called Kw. So for any solution of water, no matter what is in the water, okay, for any solution of water, the product of the hydronium ion concentration times the 
product I mean the product of the concentration of the hydronium ion concentration times the um, product of the concentration of the hydroxide ion is going to equal 10 to the minus 14. Now acids typically tend to inc they the definition of an acid is a substance which increases the hydronium ion concentration of a solution or decreases the hydroxide ion concentration of a solution. So again, let me go back to that let me write that equation that we had over here. The product of the hydron hydronium ion concentration times the the concentration of the hydroxide ion concentration. What am I saying? The product of the concentration of the hydronium ion times uh, and the um, concentration of the hydroxide ion is equal to 10 to the minus 14. So acids will increase the hydronium ion concentration in a solution of water and therefore decrease the hydroxide ion concentration. Because again, this is like, this is an equilibrium. And it's like math. If you increase a number in, let's say we had um, x times y equals 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so if the value of x increases, then the value of y must decrease. In the same sense, if the concentration of the hydronium ion increases, then the concentration of the hydroxide ion must decrease. <clears throat> so an acid is basically a substance which does that, increases the hydronium ion concentration. Okay. Now a base increases the hydroxide ion concentration of a solution or decreases the hydronium ion concentration of a solution. And let me go ahead and represent that with our little equation here again. So base will increase the concentration of the hydroxide ion or in turn decrease the concentration of the hydronium ion. Again, if you had x times y equals 10 to the minus 14, if you increased y, then x must, must decrease in order for this value to be the same. So same sense, a base will increase hydroxide ion concentration and therefore decrease the hydronium ion concentration. Okay, now let me go back and give you an example of an acid and how exactly um, it would decrease, uh, or I mean, sorry, increase the hydronium ion concentration. So if you had HCl and if, this is an example of an acid, it's called hydrochloric acid, and we went ahead and we put it in water, it would dissociate to form H plus and Cl minus. And then what will happen is that this H plus will come and it will bond to a water molecule. So if you have a water molecule right here, it will come, it will bond to this water molecule, and then there will be affinity here. Okay, and then that in turn will form hydronium, and then if as more HCl is added to the water, more H plus will be, will be formed, and then that in turn will bond to more water molecules and create more hydronium, therefore increasing its concentration. Okay, that's an example of an acid. Now let's look at, look at an example of a base. If we had NaOH, when NaOH, sodium hydroxide, when that's put into water, it will form Na plus and OH minus. So as the amount of sodium hydroxide is increased and it's more and more of it is being put in water, that in turn will increase the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And therefore, that's why it's a base. Also, another example of a base is um, ammonia. And what ammonia will do is it will decrease the concentration of hydronium. Because what it'll do is it'll take one of the hydrogen atoms this is H3O plus, and it'll, it'll steal it, and it'll convert the hydronium into water, and then become NH4 plus. So essentially what this thing right here is doing is it's, it's taking hydronium and converting it into water. So therefore, it's decreasing the hydronium ion concentration and increasing, therefore increasing the hydroxide ion concentration of the solution of water. So that NH3 can also be considered a base. Okay, now that com that might blow past your head, and you might not completely understand it, um, but just all you have to know, um, just say the most important thing you take from this is just the definitions. Acid increases the hydronium ion concentration or decreases the hydroxide ion concentration. Bases increase the hydroxide ion concentration and decrease the 
hydronium ion concentration. Okay, now the pH scale gives the scientists a way of measuring how acidic or basic an aqueous solution is. So a solution that is acidic has a pH lower than 7, and a solution that is basic has a pH of higher than 7. That's all you need to know about the pH scale. And buffers are substances that prevent a great change in the pH of a solution. So in biology, we're going to be looking at many different solutions. Um, aqueous solutions, and for some aqueous solutions, it's, it's important that the environment is remained uh, constant. So for example, in your body, your body has a lot of enzymes. You're going to be talking a lot about enzymes later in the future, but in order for these enzymes to work, the pH of the solution that they are within the cell has to be kept a, um, a constant um, if the pH starts to fluctuate and the concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide start to change, what will happen is that the enzyme will stop working. So in biology, it's very important that the pH of um, an aqueous solution uh, is maintained constant. So buffers are substances that, pre substances that prevent um, a great change, that help prevent a great change in the pH of a solution. Um, what they basically do is they take an acid and or a base and they they stop it from dissociating and ch um, changing the concentrations of the hydronium ion or the hydroxide ion. So just make just know that make sure you know that definition. Substances that help prevent a great change in the pH of a solution is considered a buffer. It's called a buffer, and buffers are all over, um, seen everywhere in biology, um, and that's basically everything you have to know about acids, bases, and buffers. Acids, bases, and buffers are as simple as that.